Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Exploring the Paranormal on a Fabulous Tuesday morning. I know it's cooler here in Florida, so I'm hoping everybody up north is staying warm um, and you guys are enjoying your December so far. Sorry for the late delay. Of course, the maintenance guy, yeah, maintenance guy decides to show up five minutes before I'm supposed to go live, but you know, hey, it happens. But I am super excited to be joined by a special guest. I've been wanting to get her on the show for a while, and we finally got our schedules to work out. So I am super excited to welcome Alex to the show. Welcome. Alex, thank you for joining me today and taking time out of your day. Yeah, Heather, thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yes, and exactly. What One thing I always start off all my shows with is um, take a moment to introduce yourself and then also let our guests know exactly what got you involved in the paranormal. Yeah, so I'm a paranormal researcher investigator. Um, I've been doing this for, uh, um, I guess you could say <laughs> seriously or in an organized manner since 2011. Um, when I started my team, the Association of Paranormal Study, and uh, really, this actually ties into my or whole origin story, I like to say, um, is I had experiences when I was younger, as most of us do, it's not the most original thing, but I had experiences <laughs> when I was a kid. And then I had a really concerning experience when I was uh, about 19, 20 years old. Um, and at that time, and this was 2006, the paranormal community that we know today did not exist back in 2006. So trying to mm -hmm. find help with, with this issue that I was having was extraordinarily difficult. Mm -hmm. And so I really started my team to kind of be that answer to that, to that gap, to that, um, to that missing link in my community mm -hmm. of, you know, I wanted to be a resource for my community. I wanted to help my community with their paranormal issues. Um, and then from there, I just kind of stemmed into, you know, deep diving into research. Um, I put out my first book in 2014. Um, I started the spooky stuff in 2020 as my pandemic project uh, that kind of <laughs> stuck. And uh, yeah, I still have my team. I still do the spooky stuff. I still write. Uh, yeah. And I've just kind of been doing the thing since then. <laughs> Yeah. And I know when you and I first met, it was when uh, the pandemic was starting. I know I had seen you on Facebook doing different things here and there. And uh, but when we were on Ghost Education 101 in the beginning together, it was it was always nice to hear from different points of views. And it was one of those things where I was actually I don't want to really use the term starstruck, but I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm on a panel with Alex <laughs> because I had been watching you from behind the scenes for so long mm -hmm. that it was really interesting. And I'm just really glad that you, you know, you do take the time to help educate others because your spooky stuff blog, I go to it as a reference quite often. <laughs> oh, awesome. I'm glad. I'm glad it's helpful. <laughs> I'm always using it. And then, of course, you have some entertaining blogs on there, too. So it's, you know, <laughs> it, it's a source of a lot of great information. So thank you yeah. for continuing to do all that. Yep. Oh, thanks. Thanks for reading it. <laughs> yeah. And then it's funny, too, when you were talking, it's you were talking about in 2004, there was no help in all of that stuff. And I'm like sitting here thinking, I'm like, crap, I'm old because I'm thinking back to 1987 when I had my first experience and I had to go to the library. Nice. We didn't have the Internet. <laughs> So you know, um, you know, I had I had that interest too, like, you know, in the night in the 90s, mm -hmm. um, for the baby stages of the Internet. So, I mean, I was in like the Yahoo message boards, the Yahoo chat, yes. you know, ASL <laughs> and um, age, you know, age, sex, location, you know, that, yeah. for those for the young for the younger <laughs> ones who don't know. Um, yeah. I, I, I am floored to this day that I did not get abducted. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> so um, so it was like baby stages, you know, with like mm -hmm. GeoCities website, and actually, um, I think the Warrens website was one of the first like paranormal yeah. websites I ever went to, yeah. and I was terrified. It was so scary back then. <laughs> <laughs> And it's funny too, because in this field, even though you want to, you know, educate and like my goal is to not make people afraid mm -hmm. in addition to making this more scientific. Um, yeah. But back in the day, it was like, like you said, the websites, they created them to be scary and, you know, spooky. And it's like, mm -hmm. you know, that to me, I mean, granted, it's what people wanted to see. So of course they're yeah. going to, you know, you know, you build it, they're going to come um, type of thing, but it, it really oh, needs to be more educational. So what are your thoughts and what do you have planned to help educate people in the field? Yeah. So really I'm trying to, at least with like my blog and, um, mm -hmm my books and even just like my presence on mainstream social media like YouTube and TikTok mm -hmm. I'm really trying to push back on like the the I always joke that these some of the and no and no offense to these creators at all but a lot mm -hmm. of them look like Rembrandt paintings when in their thumbnails like <gasps> 
you know, that, that face. I'm really trying to push back uh, against the stigma of, you know, anything that goes bump in the night or anything that you can't mm -hmm. see is going, is out there to hurt you. And it's scary. Mm -hmm. Um, now sometimes it can be startling, as I say, you know, even when I go on investigations to this day, depend, depending on where I'm at, I may feel a little nervous, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah. but it's also, it's just the possibility of not knowing it's the ambiguity that's, you know, scary. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but I'm really trying to push back on and also be, you know, be, and I'm also trying to push back in a loving, friendly way that you don't have to like dress in all black every day and be goth or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, look a certain way to enjoy the field either. I mean, I'm taking pictures in cut up jeans and flannel shirts, you know, in cemeteries, like saying, Hey, I'm right. here, you mm -hmm. know, um, really trying to push it, not push against, but, um, just show that anybody can enjoy and experience the paranormal. Um, you don't have to be like part of a niche, um, you know, because mm -hmm. everybody has paranormal experiences, um, right. not just not just like spooky people um, mm -hmm. you know, say I'm a spooky person, but that's because I'm going out looking for it. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, people from all walks of life can have experiences and can enjoy the paranormal and, and ultimately just remind people that for the most part, at least the way that we define a ghost and a spirit in society today, these are people. They're people mm -hmm. like you and me. Um, yeah. They're people just like you and me. They have faults. They have passions. They may have been nice. They may have not been so nice in life. Um, it's just like dealing with a brand new neighbor you just met. Mm -hmm. uh, or if you are frequenting a location, it's like seeing an old friend. Um, right. Yeah. So really, I mean, it's, you know, it's one of those things that I really want to advocate, like inclusion and inclusion for everybody. Like there's a mm -hmm. CNC for you in the paranormal uh, doesn't matter what clothes you wear doesn't matter like what you look like or what you're into mm -hmm. um some of my favorite people that i meet in the field are um you know like oh hey i'm a rocket scientist during by day and then at night i'm using quantum physics in my investigating yeah. and I'm like, oh my god i want to be your best friend um <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> And I mean, for me personally, that's what this field needs. I mean, I, I truly do believe that there is a place for everyone, um, but not everyone can handle the like the residential cases. Oh, you no. Know, I, you you got to categorize them and you got to know your limits, too. I mean, if you know you can go in and test for quantum physics and try to get answers to the afterlife, then that's your area. If, if you just want to, you know, I call them weekend warriors. I know other people call them thrill seekers. If you just want to go and have the experience, go have at it. Yep. Um, but make sure you have the education and the experience to help a client and not go in and with your gadgets and like make it worse. Yeah, I think that's where I think self-identifying needs. Mm -hmm. I think we do need to push more for that, especially yeah. in the social media sense of like, hey, this is for entertainment purposes only. Mm -hmm. And I know the UK, I think, has a law about that, yeah. like especially with their programming, like mm -hmm. this is for entertainment. Um, I think we could use that, at least in, in the United States, um, mm -hmm. because. You know, I mean, I know some amazing researchers who are great content creators, but not every content creator is a great researcher. Right. So, um, because yep. I, and I know that's a point of contrition for a lot of like, at least a lot of creators that I know. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I always put, I put it that way. I know some researchers who are amazing content creators like Becky Ann Galantine uh, mm -hmm. is incredible. Um, I love her work because she does like this, the research and the, mm -hmm. the, she does the work behind it and she makes great content. So she's really sure. talented with that. But I've also run into some content creators who are, who are not so great at research, but they're trying to mm -hmm. sell themselves as serious researchers. And that holds weight. That holds weight, mm -hmm. especially when they start making claims that are un unsubstantiated, you know, like, oh, right. there's an evil spirit at this asylum. And then two weeks later, someone's trying to set the asylum on fire because the their favorite content creator said that there were, that there were demons in the building. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I, th or, or what's worse is if someone is saying, like a, an established content creator saying, oh, this person's possessed when they're actually suffering from a mental health issue, a person mm -hmm. with that mental health issue can can say, oh, I don't have to take my meds anymore. I know it's a demon. And then they, they harm themselves. Right. Um, so I think self-identifying, not necessarily labels, but self-identifying strengths and limitations, I think is important. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and for me, like I tell people like, I, I'm happy to assess, but I am not a mental health specialist. I will bring in someone who's a mental health specialist. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. I'm a researcher. 
if there's an area that I'm not familiar with, I bring in people. So a lot mm -hmm. of times it's less me like trying to solve the issue versus I'm going to connect you with people who can help you. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Like I'm not I like, and I'm not a demonologist either, but I know a couple of demonologists that I can call, you know, mm -hmm. with a situation that I'm like, eh, I think this is out of my <laughs> scope of talent. And I think we need this, at least in the community, we need to make it more okay to admit that. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, you know what? This is out of my scope. Uh, let's see who we can bring in to help you. Right. Um, and I've been doing that since I started my team. Like a lot of times, like I said, I kind of turn into more of like the networking person and the bridge to mm -hmm. bring people yeah. together to help a client. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost like being a general practitioner in medicine today. You know the basics, but you have all these areas of specialty that you can refer yep. <laughs> your client that, out to. That's exactly it. That's exactly mm -hmm. it. So, you know, like I, you know, when my doctor found out I had diabetes and my mm -hmm. blood work didn't quite come out to, oh, yeah, you're type two. She was like, you know what? I'm going to get you an endocrinologist. You know? yep. <laughs> so that's that's exactly what it is. <laughs> Yeah. And it's funny because I remember back in the day, this is dating myself again, where you went to your general practitioner for everything. And then now today oh you just go to him and he's like, okay, you know, for my, I have a kidney doctor, I have a knee doctor, I have a blood pressure doctor and it's like yep. a different doctor for everything. And that's almost kind of like what the paranormal field is like now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And it's great. You know, it's really mm -hmm. great that we have that yep. now. Um, and a lot of times I'll follow these other people with more specialty, uh, mm -hmm. specialized skills or knowledge, um, like Ron and Lourdes, you know, I love mm -hmm. what they do with, yep. with, with their work. I mean, and I'm, and I'm not like super knowledgeable about that area. I mean, I know like basics, but I'm not, I don't do what mm -hmm. they do. So I will follow them and, you know, I will watch their work and I'll mm -hmm. attend their sessions and, and learn like there's, mm -hmm. we can learn a lot from each other. Yeah. And going on that aspect is what are your thoughts on educating? Because I have a lot of people who I put a post up on my Facebook page, I want to say about three months ago, that mm -hmm. said, what are your thoughts about getting educated in the paranormal field? And out of over a thousand comments, 95% of them were, you don't need to be educated in this field. Because if you have it, you have it. <laughs> no, that's for me. Uh, absolutely. Some you need to be educated. So mm -hmm. <laughs> some of the most talented people and the people and I'll and I'll, and I'll say this, the people who are able to who have the perseverance, who have perseverance mm -hmm. and who have stuck around this field longer than others mm -hmm. have gotten an education. They've yeah. taken classes. They, you know, I mean, you, um, mm -hmm. Lloyd Auerbach, um, yeah. some of the more notable names that I can think of um, have have gone to some sort of school or they've, mm -hmm. you know, even if it's just like a class that a paranormal team is offering, that's still, you're learning that person's, you know, background yeah. and expertise. Um, I mean, I took classes before I, especially, especially if you're going to work with the public, mm -hmm. you need to take some sort of like yeah. classes in, um, it's just so you like, especially if you're going to speak on like, especially the technology, like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I believe that every paranormal <laughs> investigator needs you got my soapbox out. Um, I believe that every paranormal <laughs> investigator needs to, at the very least, take a photography class, a mm -hmm. videography class, and some sort of audio engineering class. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of free resources to take advantage of that. Um, and also just, you know, and also working with um, working with the public, what, you know, basic maybe mental health 101 on how to identify is this person in a crisis versus there may be a ghost there mm -hmm. um yeah. I, absolutely i think i mean it kind of brings me into that whole like there's no experts in the paranormal that right. statement drives me nuts because okay i'm at least i'm not the only one <laughs> no it drives me nuts yes. um because it's not that there's no experts in the paranormal, but we have experts in other specialties in the paranormal. Mm -hmm. right. So like if someone posts a picture of an orb, a photographer could chime in and say, hey, I know that's a, I can see here that it's a bug and here's mm -hmm. the reasons why. Um, or same thing with video or, mm -hmm. uh, or when we're listening to audio and audio pareidolia, which is, you know, that is a thing. Mm -hmm. Pareidolia yeah. is not just visual, it's also auditorial and you, it's actually, sense wise touch as well mm -hmm. um because your body's trying to make sense of what it's seeing what it's feeling right um 
but then there's people who know about this and we need mm -hmm. to listen to them and we need to listen to them. Um, but yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, you need, I, I, my, my team does not really go out into the field or until at least I vet their background mm -hmm. and I know that they're safe to be around, um, right. meaning like they're not going to get hurt. They're not going to hurt other people. They're not going to hurt the location. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, yes, it is. It is. I don't even like to call it a pseudoscience. I mean, it is a field that is very accessible to people. I mean, mm -hmm. anybody can go out on a ghost hunt. Yeah. Anybody can do that. But not everybody knows how to research, do historical research. Not everybody knows like how to engage a spirit. Mm -hmm. um, because once you start getting a response, what's the next step? Yep. Exactly. What kind of questions do you ask? Uh, how do you log that with your data? How do you keep track of this? How do you, um, do follow up? Um, mm -hmm. there's just, and, and that's, that's one thing that makes me sad in the field about the field too. Sometimes is oh, you don't need an education, um, <laughs> or it's just field experience. What about people who can't have, who, who, who aren't able to get field experience? Mm -hmm. What if you have right. someone who, is, who has a physical, um, disability who can't go out, um, mm -hmm. They still have strengths in paranormal research, but research also takes a certain amount of skill. Um, you know, I mean, I, we run into, I run into similar things in the theater community because, you know, I can go get my MFA, I can get, get a PhD in theater, but then I can never make it on, I, I may never make it on Broadway. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm here right now, so right. I haven't made it on Broadway, <laughs> but you can, but then somebody could walk in who's never had any sort of theater training. They walk into an audition, they land yep. the role. But that's natural talent. Mm -hmm. That's natural yeah. talent. That's very, that's been in that context, very rare. There are some people who are naturally talented in this world, in this field, uh, but that's not everybody. Um, mm -hmm. Not everybody has that natural talent. Some people have to learn. I, I, I had to learn. Um, mm -hmm. I had to learn. And even some of the more naturally talented people I've met, they've had to learn. So mm -hmm. I don't know. And there's so many, because and there's so many areas of this field. You have the science. You have the you have research. You have historical research. You have um, tech. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you you don't you don't learn how to K, how a K two works by just looking at it and using it. You know, yeah. uh, people. I, I always tell people reading. read the manual, and learn how it works in the real world yeah. before you use it on a paranormal investigation. Exactly. Exactly. So it just, I just get really sad when people say like, you don't need an education to be a part of the field. Yeah. It's because it's, it's technically true, but it's like, okay, then in that case, what kind of person are you in this field? Are you yeah. in your case, what well, you mentioned a week, are you a weekend warrior? Mm -hmm. If you're a weekend warrior, maybe you don't need the education, but if you mm -hmm. want to write a book, if you want to get on TV, if you want coverage by the local press, yeah, you might need some, some additional <laughs> assistance. Yeah. No, I remember it was last summer. I had someone who messaged me after one of the shows that I was on, um, just mm -hmm. wanting to know more about where I went to school and, you know, what I, what my experience was. And I probably spent two or three days messaging back and forth with this person. And then they finally ended the conversation with, well, thank you for your time and your information, but I don't feel I need to do what you did to ghost hunt. And my response was very polite. I'm like, well, that's the difference. You're a ghost hunter. I'm a researcher. Boom. Because <laughs> you know, I, I actually waited a day before I responded. Because I'm like, how do I respond Good. to this and not sound snarky? <laughs> right. Yeah. That And that's that's what makes it. And that's where that, like I mentioned earlier, that line mm -hmm. between like, because people see some major content creators with millions of followers who... Yeah probably didn't take any sort of classes or read mm -hmm. anything and they see that level of, of success. And this is what I tell people. Um, cause this is, cause I've had people with bigger followings tell me that they know more than me in the paranormal because they have a bigger following. And this is what I say to them. I say, you having a bigger following has nothing to do with your knowledge <laughs> in the paranormal. It means you are good at marketing. Mm -hmm. It means you're good at knowing how to sell a brand. Right. And that brand right. just happens to be you. Mm -hmm. And that, again, takes education. That takes learning. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, it's, it's learning. Um, I work at, I work in the field of learning. So, I, I mean, I can, I can speak on this with some, mm -hmm. with some authority. Um, right. I work in learning experience design for a major corporation. Um, 
And so adult learning, especially mm -hmm. adult learning theories is my specialty. Yeah. Um, I, that's my job. I have to know how people absorb and absorb information. Um, but yeah, so, so just because somebody has a million followers and is moderately successful, that doesn't mean they know anything about the paranormal. They know that means right. they know how to edit video and they know how to market. That's it. Right. Yeah. And, and I always joke with people because I'm not in it for the numbers. I do this, you know, if you come across my video and you like it, great. If you don't, that's mm -hmm. fine too, you know, and we, um, we're, we've been watching my numbers recently. So somewhere along the line, someone shared one of my videos and it like, oh, took nice. off. Oh, but good. up until a month ago, I only had 14 YouTube followers. And I was happy with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, I'm not in it for the numbers. I'm just, you know, I just do my own thing. And, you know, mm -hmm. if people see it, they see it. And yeah, that's kind of that's kind of been me with my especially with my YouTube channel and my um, and my TikTok content. And then again, it, sometimes it just takes that one thing to take mm -hmm. off. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, hey, people are actually like watching me and liking <laughs> and this is amazing. And um yeah. And honestly, I will say like doing it the way that you and I are doing it, like you end up, you end up cultivating a really dedicated group, right. a really dedicated group of mm -hmm. followers. Um, and it's, it's nice. It's, it's nice mm -hmm. because, yeah. you know, and you also know that you're attracting the people who, 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 um, who align with your values too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, on the platform I'm on with the biggest following I have, sometimes I don't quite mesh with that with everybody because mm -hmm. I went viral over a video that wasn't actually my normal content, but it was spooky and mm -hmm. it was creepy. And then people see my other content. And they're like, wait, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> but then the ones that stick around, you know, then it's like, oh, you know, now because of you, I'm, you know, doing more critical thinking when I look at these videos now. And I'm like, yes, you know, it's like, that's, exactly. that's, that's what I want. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. I, I just want uh, people to, you know, look at the paranormal the way that I do in a sense, I guess. Right. Yep. Yeah. You know, and it's all about, you know, like we've been talking about education and um, bringing our information to a platform where people can access it mm -hmm. because this field, the one thing that drives me crazy is when we lived in Vegas, there yeah. was uh, several groups we encountered that were like, we're the one and only team to investigate here. No, you can't see our evidence. No, you can't get the contact information to investigate here. Yeah. And it's like, you know, what pops in my head is, first of all, is the field's never going to move forward if you don't share. Yep. And two is you just don't want us to disprove what you found or what you're claiming to find. That's yeah. <laughs> um in North Carolina, where I used to live, there's a bit of that happen. There's mm -hmm. a bit of that happening now, and I'll probably get in trouble for speaking on it. But uh, <laughs> I live in Virginia now, DC. It's okay. <laughs> I'll just hop over to Maryland. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but that is a thing. I do have. Um, I have an issue with exclusive contracts, in the sense of if you're not allowing other groups to experience that location, even if it's just like a one, like one, like, okay, we'll let one person on your team come with, um, mm -hmm. and you're not really exact again, sharing a lot of your data. It's, it turns into more of like, Oh, it's, it's like a marketing thing instead of a mm -hmm. research thing. Right. Um, which there's a lot of that in this field. I mean, that's, that's where this field can be so competitive. Like sometimes I feel bad if I go to a location, I didn't take a photo of myself. It's like, well, how am I going to prove that I was here? You know? Right. And then if I take a photo of myself, you know, do I have the right filters? And, um, you know, am I marketing myself properly? Did I put my makeup on today? Did I put my makeup on? Gosh, I can't <laughs> see. And I'm somebody that investigates in like leggings, lounge pants, sweatshirts, Mm -hmm. tennis shoes. I'm not like dressed up when I go anywhere. Like most right. of the time my hair is in a ponytail. Um, depending mm -hmm. on the location, I may even be wearing pajamas, <laughs> <You know? laughs> if it's not too, uh, dusty and dirty, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it's, and uh, yeah, so I'm kind of informal in that way, but yeah, just the, and it's, and it's a competition of like, well, how many locations can we get just with us? And, mm -hmm. Right. And then it's like, well, what what are you doing to f move the research field forward? Mm -hmm. You know, right. like even if it's just like an ongoing observation, like what kind of fruit are you producing? And that's really what I look at 
with anything, it's like, what kind mm -hmm. of fruit are they producing? That's like the one yeah. biblical thing I'll ever reference. Uh, cause it's right. true. Um, yeah. you know, it's like, are, cause some of the, some of the most interesting things that I've read have been, you know, um, you know, like the studies from Borley rectory or, or, um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Ch Chillingham, um, you know, where it's just literally like day three heard <laughs> footsteps going down the hallway day four, it was a mouse, you know? Um, but those are like the most interesting things for me to read. And, but that right. pushes the field forward in some mm -hmm. sense, because it's, it's giving us more information on how we can learn about this phenomena. And, mm -hmm. uh, with these exclusive yeah. contracts, I feel like they're not really moving it forward. It's just more of like, mm -hmm. Hey, how can we look good? And if I'm right. wrong, I'm, I'm open to being wrong, but it's, I feel like it's just being used to, for self-promotion, you know, mm -hmm. especially around Halloween time. So. Right. Yeah. And they look good because, you know, we're the one and only team to investigate here. And, mm -hmm. you know, I completely agree with you. And it's one, we actually have one location um, that the former team that I was on out in Vegas, we were invited and only three of the investigators on our entire team were invited because we were filming for discovery. Oh, okay. Okay. And it was just before, I mean, like the February before COVID shut everything down. So it was like right there on that brink of um, all of that happening. So they invited the three of us up. And after we filmed, the guy decided, you know, he's like, yes, I agree with you guys. It's haunted. Uh, but I can't for safety reasons because it was underground mines. Mm -hmm. So for safety reasons, he couldn't allow any more investigators in. So I always feel bad saying, you know, hey, we were the one and only team to come in there, but mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it's not for any of the reasons why these other teams have and that. that. Makes sense. It was it was shut down. Yeah. And that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Right. So but yeah, it, it, that, and that place. Oh, my God. I wish I hadn't shut down because it, the place was nonstop for four days from the day we got there to the time we left. Mm -hmm. And it, it was that was a lot of fun. So, yeah. um, and that's actually one of my favorite places I've ever investigated. What would be your favorite place that you've investigated? Mm. Uh, I guess it would have to be the tri the Trivette Clinic in Hamptonville, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was such a favorite. I wrote a book about it. Um, <laughs> it's a really special location. And uh, it's this little hospital. Well, it used to be a clinic in um, rural North Carolina, in Hamptonville, mm -hmm. North Carolina. And uh, it was built in 1932. The doctor who built it passed away in 1938. After that, the, it became a supper club in the basement and then a detox clinic on the main floor, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, which, you know, that was a kind of a smart business plan. Um, mm -hmm. And then it became a nursing home and a few iterations before it was a private residence. And uh, the place was report is reported to be haunted by over 70 ghosts. I would say the claim's not totally exaggerated because it seems like this is a location that I don't want to say collects spirits like, ooh, it's a ghost collector. <laughs> but um, it's, it's a very homey, comfortable place. Um, it's a very homey and comfortable place where uh, I think, pe you know, maybe, well, people and spirits find it to be home, be like home. Mm -hmm. um, so... I think that's the reason why. Um, and then I also have a theory that maybe some of these spirits are egregores or thought forms yep. um, because a lot of mediums will come in with like similar readings, but then they'll name them differently. And then it kind of becomes part of the story. Mm -hmm. And then those stories get told. So I do have some theories that perhaps maybe the Trevet Clinic is haunted by egregores. Um that's a whole like mm -hmm. other thing for, you know, a whole other topic for another say, That's a whole other show. That's a whole other show. Um, and uh, I'm a big fan of the Philip experiment. If, if, oh. if you can't tell. Um, yes. I've done lots of re I actually talk about it in one of my presentations. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. I actually got to uh, see and touch one of the tables that was used for the Philip experiment. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> I was geeking out and mm -hmm. I got to do a seance on that table with uh, Rosemary Ellen Guiley. Oh, I yes. got to do a table tipping session. So, you know, <laughs> paranormal bucket list, you know, like five things got signed off that day. Um, and that's something I will always like humble brag about. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so that's probably one of my favorite places. And it's honestly an ongoing research project for me. Mm -hmm. I haven't been back in about a year because, you know, after moving to Northern Virginia, it makes it a little mm -hmm. hard to go down to North Carolina sometimes. Yeah. But um, I would say that's definitely one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. 
cool, cool. And um, one thing that I had thought of while you were talking before we get to move on to the books that you've written and your projects that you have going on is when it comes to a haunted location, we've actually been to several locations, whether it's hosting an event or offering tours or even just going as you know guests to have fun. One of the rules some of these locations have is do not cross spirits over. They need to oh. stay here. Yeah. Um, but I personally feel we're here for the spirit, like you said, the spirits and the humans, you know, what are your thoughts on those rules that these places put in place? <laughs> I'm not a fan for one, but also it's like, how do they enforce that? <laughs> like, I like how, I guess, you know, um, I almost feel like as somebody who has a very limited knowledge of law, um, I did work for a police department for a very brief period of time in my mm -hmm. career. Um, but so, and I watch a lot of law and order, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, for me, it's like, my initial thought is like, how do you enforce that? You know, because right. even if, even if it's like, well, we caught you on video doing a, you know, crossing a spirit over, it's like, okay, prove it, prove that I crossed them over. Mm-hmm. You know, um, yeah. and then that, and that opens up that ugly case of, well, now we have to prove that spirits exist mm -hmm. um, in some sort of like substantial way. Um, so that's that's my that's my uh, technical petty you know response to that. It's like, well, how would mm -hmm. you prove it? But right. the other side of it, though, I have an issue with like to me, we have free will. We have we sh we should be able to have the ability to consent to things that are done to us. Mm -hmm. um, and in this case, if you're not allowed to cross spirits over, one, I don't believe in forcing spirits to cross over. But if there's mm -hmm. a spirit in distress that clearly needs to do something to that extent, right. who are you to say that they're not allowed to do that? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I feel like that's building up some really bad karma for the location owner, for one, because yeah. um, in, in that case, you're holding spirits, you're holding people, you're holding people <laughs> hostage right. uh, so that you can make a buck. And that's that's uh, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. And for me, it's like, well, maybe one, you should also create a better environment for your spirits so that they don't want to leave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's yeah. my that's my thing it's like i'm sorry i don't want to hang out in a dirty old building with paint chips all over the floor you know right. for the rest of my afterlife um yeah. or paranormal I, teams coming in and you know instigating yeah oh gosh <laughs> well my so i'm I, I mean unlike what you're seeing right now for the most part mm -hmm. i'm fairly introverted and antisocial. like after we're done today i'm probably not going to talk to anybody for the rest of the day um <laughs> unless i have to for for work um mm -hmm. But for me, it's like the the idea of having to tell my story or talk to people every day, especially at these mm -hmm. bigger locations. Absolutely not. Right. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. not. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah, And that always cracks me up. People are like, oh, the place isn't haunted. It's like, well, are you sure? <laughs> it could be the spirits didn't want to talk to you. Maybe yeah. they just weren't there that day because the spirits don't aren't stuck at a location. Yeah. So, you know, and, you know, the newcomers and that's where the education comes into play. You know, yep. it, all, it all goes back to <laughs> getting educated. It goes back to education. So. So one yeah. of your most recent books, um, which I've yet to read, I need to make sure I get that because it's one that's on my list in my Amazon queue <laughs> mm -hmm. to, to get is Women of the Paranormal. What yeah. inspired you to write that and what is it about? <sighs> so there's a couple things that inspired me. Um, well, one when you look at the paranormal entertainment climate, there is a very specific type of person that is dominating paranormal entertainment. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a ripple effect when, when you have basically white guys <laughs> uh, dominating mm -hmm. television on almost every show, um, mm -hmm. it creates a ripple effect into the event circuit. Right. Um, and then that's all who gets invited to be guests at these events. Um, but even so, when I was I was talking to a friend of mine about, you know, historical people and the paranormal and who I could name off. And uh, I was like, oh, Hans Holzer, Harry Price, <laughs> Peter Underwood. And I'm like, oh, these are all men. Mm -hmm. And then and then I'm like, OK, that can't be right. Um, and I remembered, gosh, it was had to have been 2000. 11 2011 i was working on a presentation for my meetup group on poltergeist and 
Catherine Crow's name came up and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, it's a female. That's cool. And, you know, Catherine Crow wrote The Night Side of Nature. She introduced Poltergeist and Doppelganger into English usage. Um, so she's a pretty inspiring person. Mm -hmm. And her work set the set the foundation for the Society for Psychical Research. How? Why don't we know her name more? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so that was kind of my big thing um and i think the tipping point was when i was i was hosting a panel at con carolinas about women of the paranormal mm -hmm. and the moderator was like you know name off your favorite person in the paranormal or your favorite female in the paranormal mm -hmm. and i was so excited and when the mod called on me i was like katherine crow <laughs> and crickets and i'm like katherine crow <laughs> katherine crow <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, but people didn't know who she was, and uh, that was, and then um, there were some other people like Amanda Woomer who were starting to who was starting the feminine macabre, mm -hmm. uh, highlighting female non binary writers in the paranormal research circuit. And Amanda spotlights a woman of the of the paranormal past in every mm -hmm. book. And she wrote about Catherine Crow too. So, um, so seeing the work of other women also highlighting women of the field was um, really like inspiring to me as well. Right. Um, but yeah, the, the tipping point was Con Carolinas though. Mm -hmm. And um, and just and realizing, cause I initially I was just gonna do this as a blog series and I had 12 names. And I was like, well, I mean, if each, woman is about 3000 words. It's actually pretty good for a little novella. You know, I'm like, that would be right. a really cool little novella. <laughs> but then I started doing more research and I'm like, oh, now I'm at 20 women. Okay. Now I'm at 30. Okay. Now I'm at 60. Oh God, help me. You know, <laughs> but just seeing like how many women have made significant contributions in this field and we don't know their names. Um, right or we use their methodologies, but we don't credit them. And I'm mm -hmm. not talking about like the Fox sisters. I mean, I'm talking about Sarah Wilson Estep who brought the classification mm -hmm. of EVP to the United States. Right. Talking about Thelma Moss who ran the parapsychology unit at UCLA and she was Barry Taft's supervisor, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so women, so women like them who, have been there they've always been there but their legacies have been buried so to speak because you know either of marketing or because you know they were dealing with a patriarchal society which you know in Catherine crow's case uh mm -hmm. you know violet tweeddale um alexandra david neal um you know those women were dealing definitely with the patriarchy being the dominant right. class but uh yeah there's just so much out there that I like, I wish people, I wish we could, like, I could introduce them to, I introduce these women mm -hmm. to people and the book seemed to be the most logical yeah. way to do it. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I'm definitely going to read it and keep an eye out on my blog for a review of it once I get to it. But this bookcase behind me is filled with books I haven't had a chance to get to. to read. I, so I hear, I hear that. <laughs> just keep piling up. And I know we talked before the show because I've seen you mention on Facebook as well that you are now one of the newest History Press author authors coming out yeah. soon. Which yeah. Which book is the topic about? Yeah. So I am writing a book about haunted places in Northern Virginia. Mm -hmm. So I live in the most north of Northern Virginia. Um, if you, it, I, my, my apartment is right on the Potomac River. So I'm right across from Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a lot of topic, a lot of content already covered about haunted places in D.C. Um, so I, I, I was talking to Sam Baltrusis and he's mm -hmm. like, I'm not really interested in reading another book about Washington, D.C., but I am interested in reading about haunted places in where you live. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Arlington? Really? And he's like, oh, yeah. And so <laughs> When I was positioning it to History Press, it kind of went from a haunted places in Arlington to haunted places in Northern Virginia um, mm -hmm. and covering the other areas besides like Manassas, Battlefield and Bull Run. But like Sterling, Dulles, Reston, Occoquan, mm -hmm. yep. that's like the very place where like our like, you know, our country, United States began and planted its roots. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of really rich ghost stories of, of that area. And uh it's actually been a really great way for me to get to get to know the community I just moved to like almost two years ago. Mm -hmm. So, yep, yeah, that's um like the one I'm working on right now, and I couldn't believe how many stories there are. But it's a uh, Ghosts and Legends of Florida Pirates is the one oh, that I'm working oh, on that's coming that. out next summer, 
And holy crap, every time I research a different topic, it's like a hundred different, you know. <laughs> yeah. It, it's like they want a certain word count and I'm already over that by 20,000. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, so that's, 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 a, that's a pretty good dent for history press too. Cause I think what's like what 40,000 words is the limit. So that's like yeah. over halfway there. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and they've, they, you're going to love it. I mean, they have been a pleasure to work with. I worked with an editor first out in the West coast when I did mm -hmm. my Vegas and uh, Nevada books, but then when we oh, moved nice. back to Florida, the editor here and their marketing teams are amazing. And it's just, they're, they're a lot of fun to work with. And they do keep in, I mean, I'm not sure who you have as your editor, but I know mine keeps in contact with me about once a month, at least, even if he doesn't hear from me. Oh, nice. Nice. That's so, awesome. Yeah. yeah. They are a lot of fun. Um, so before we wrap things up, I know we got a little late start. Um, is there anything you want to make sure that we cover before we go? Any upcoming outside of your books, any upcoming projects, events, places you're going to be? Um, yeah, I mean, I'll be uh, at Gettysburg this weekend for Spirit Squad Weekend with Sam Baltrusis. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing my presentation on trauma and the paranormal. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm actually doing a holiday webinar uh, next week on Monday, um, the spooky side of Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll be talking about holiday monsters, ghost stories of Christmas, <laughs> um, basically making a case for why the holiday season is actually spookier than Halloween. And then, um, I'll be at Hanover Tavern Paracon in January. Mm -hmm. I'm actually co-presenting with Brandon Masulo um, on some things. And Brandon Masulo is a very talented parapsychologist. Oh, I love Brandon. Oh, gosh, he's a wonderful <laughs> human being. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'll be I'm making an appearances at a lot of Paracons this upcoming year. So um, I know I'm going down to South Carolina. I'll be going to Mass Paracon. Um, I'll be around, you know, follow me mm -hmm. on Facebook. Instagram, TikTok. Yeah, I'm, I'm around. So I'm pretty mm -hmm. easy to find. Yeah. And hopefully next year you and I can meet face to face. Yes. <laughs> Outside of awesome. just on Facebook. <laughs> I know we're, we're always joking like uh, with Ghost Education 101, Philip and I have uh -huh. yet to meet in person. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody, it's like, you haven't? <laughs> it's like, no, we, we've never seen each other. And, and that's the way it is. That's what I love about technology nowadays. It's mm -hmm. like that with a lot of the investigators is you don't meet yeah. face to face, but you're really close to them. You know, I yeah. have several that I reach out to regularly with yeah. questions and input and, and all of that stuff. Yeah. So, so hopefully we can definitely catch up and meet face to face and uh, get time to sit down and have coffee and talk a little bit more about the paranormal. And yeah. I, I do know I have you scheduled, I think it's the end of January for the Women of the Paranormal show on Ghost Education 101. So that yeah. is going yeah. to be a fun show. I have you, um, Sin Trader Hill, Katie Foreman, and um, I'm drawing a blank on her name, um, but she's from England. Oh, nice. She will be joining as well. So we have a pretty decent panel for that one. So that is oh, going to be exciting. A lot, all of us come from different walks of life, different expertise in the field, and it mm -hmm. is going to be a fun show. So um, I'm assuming just at the spooky stuff is all of your social media handles. You were lucky enough yep. to get that all across the board. Oh, yeah. As soon as I got the idea, I was like, I'm not going to use it right now, but I'm going to reserve it. <laughs> yep. 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 <laughs> I, I know some of mine say Dr. Heather Lee, some say Heather Lee PhD. And it's like, oh, I wish I would have just gotten one. <laughs> yeah. Having one makes life so much easier. <laughs> It does. Um, so make sure everyone checks you out and um, definitely looking forward to seeing what you have planned next year and cannot wait to read your current books that are out as well as your upcoming books. So yeah, thank so you. Thank you again so much for joining us today. I hope you have a fantastic day working today. Thanks. <laughs> and I can't believe because I was like, oh, she works during the day. I hope she has time to, <laughs> to yeah, come on. I made sure I made sure this hour was blocked off of my calendar and right. hopefully my manager's not watching. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, we've only had five people watching today, but most because it's a daytime show, everybody watches mm -hmm. the replay. So if anyone has any questions on the replay, make sure you feel free to ask. I will get those to Alex so she can answer them for you. And real quick, before we go, make sure you follow the show on Exploring the Paranormal Show. And you can also catch the replay on YouTube later tonight at Heather Lee PhD. And we have two, one more show of the season. C.L. Thomas is an author and paranormal researcher. She will be here with us next week. And just a reminder, we do not have any shows in uh, December 19th or December 26th, but we return January 2nd with return guest Resnick. It's always a lot of fun talking to him about how he uses 
ink therapy to help with his paranormal trauma and help others with paranormal trauma as well. So again, thank you, Alex, for joining us. Um, definitely looking forward to chatting with you next year. You have a great day. You too.